Good morning. Please stand as we celebrate our first school mass of the year. Uh, for those of you watching this on video, the fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh graders are here. They're quite spread out in the church. We are observing social distancing. We'll have mass for the lower grades next Friday, and we'll begin to alternate weeks. And today we'll celebrate mass for our school theme, which is unity in the body of Christ, that we might all be one in the body of Christ. So very happy to see all of you here today. Let's begin our celebration in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We come before the Lord today to, um, first of all, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries by calling to mind any sins we may have committed and asking God for mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You are seated for us at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who gather together what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered, look kindly on the flock of your Son, Jesus, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the bond of charity. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated now as we listen to the readings from Scripture. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The Lord says this, I will bring all of you back home from those foreign nations and countries. I will sprinkle you with clean water and you will be clean. I will wash everything that makes you clean, unclean and I will remove your idols. I will give you a new heart and a new mind in place of the stone heart. I will give you a heart with feeling I will put my spirit in you and make you eager to obey my teachings and laws. You will live in the land that I give, gave your ancestors. You will be my people and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm is, we are the people, the sheep of his flock. We are the people, the sheep of his flock. Shout praises to the Lord, everyone on this earth. Be joyful and sing as you come in to worship the Lord. We are your people, the sheep of your flock. You know the Lord is God. He created us, and we belong to him. We are his people, the sheep in his pasture. We are the God's people, the sheep of his flock. Be thankful and praise the Lord as you enter his temple. We are God's people, the sheep of his flock. The Lord is good, his love is faith, faithfulness. It will last forever. We are God's people, the sheep of his flock. Please stand. All right, here we go. Ale, ale, ale.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Lifting up his eyes to heaven, Jesus prayed, saying, Lord, I pray not only for these disciples, but I pray for all who will believe in me through their word. I pray that they may all be one, as you, Father, are one with me, and I am one with you, that they may be one in us, and that the world may believe that you sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. First thing I want you to help me do is to welcome our new principal with a big round of applause, Miss Jessica Dwyer. Ms. Dwyer and uh, teachers and members of our staff have been working very hard to get this school year open. So we're so grateful to all of them, but especially to you, Ms. Dwyer, for your leadership in what is definitely a challenging time in our church and in our school. So uh, two weeks ago, Father Tien, by the way, is not here because he's on vacation this week. He'll be back next week. I went on vacation two weeks ago and went with my family to Orange Beach, Alabama. Anybody ever been to Orange Beach? Raise your hand if so. Good, I figured it would be a lot of people. It's a popular hangout place for people from the New Orleans area because it's closer than Florida and they have a lot of nice things too. So we went there. I have a sister who never married, so she and I are unmarried. I have two brothers married with children. So every year, my sister and I, for 20 years, have taken my nieces and nephews on vacation. And my brothers and their wives are happy to get a break, really. <laughs> but uh, this year, we only had five who were able to go with us. Now they've gotten older. They used to be little kids when they went with us. Now they're older. The youngest who went with us is 13. The oldest who went with us is 23. So the five of them and the two of us. And because some of the restaurants had not yet reopened because of coronavirus, we didn't eat out at a restaurant like we usually do when we go on vacation. We usually eat out at a restaurant once a day. But this time we cooked in meals uh, at the condominium where we stayed. And so everybody had a chance to do something creative. So for my night, I made homemade pizza and Caesar salad, and it was a big hit. They all loved it. And then each of my nieces and nephews had to do something. So my one niece decided she would do breakfast and she would bake biscuits. Boy, did she take the easy way out, huh? So she put the biscuits that come in a can on a cookie sheet, put it in the oven, they came out, put them on the table, and I said, where's the butter? How can we have biscuits without butter? It's like, it's a common, it's an unwritten rule, right? You put all that butter on your biscuits, so we didn't have that. So then my nephew did lunch that day, and his lunch was peanut butter sandwiches. So he made the sandwiches with the peanut butter on the bread, and I said, where's the jelly? Oh, we forgot to bring jelly. You can't have peanut butter without jelly. It goes together. It's a combination. It's a unity. We did that. And then finally, somebody got very sophisticated and decided to cook red beans. So one night we had red beans and sausage. And I said as it was being served, where's the rice? It's called red beans and rice. We forgot the rice, we didn't have rice. So we had red beans and sausage, but no rice, which really seemed like we were really shortchanged because it's, it's a unity, right? So we think about our world, we think about all the things that go together. And it turns out that all of this desire of ours to put things together, to bring them together, to unite them, is really something that God has designed in us. God's designed, uh, the desire for unity in us because the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who were the original three in one God, 
before anything in this world was created, lived in a unity. And we just heard it, Jesus's prayer today in the gospel. He's praying to his father. We get a sneak preview, a peek into Jesus's prayer to God. And he says, I pray not only for these, my disciples, but for everybody who will believe in them, uh, in me through their word. And I pray, Father, that they will be one as you and I are one, you and me and I and you, that they may be one in us. So Jesus, God has a great desire for our unity. And it almost seems like our whole world history has been about disunity and division and separation. We're always trying to say, well, I'm different than you. We're, we're not alike so we can't be together. That's not what God wants. God wants unity. And one of the saddest parts about this virus has been that we've been separated. We've been with our families, but we've been separated from our community. And now we have a chance to be together in unity. You know, when Jesus was picking his apostles, does anybody remember how many apostles he picked? Yes. 12, yes, good, 12 apostles. Jesus did not try to pick 12 guys who were exactly alike. In fact, he picked guys who were very different. He picked Thomas, who was a tax collector. So he went to people's houses or they came to him and they gave him taxes, which kept the Roman army in power in Israel. And then he also picked a guy named Simon the Zealot. Simon was a member of the Zealot Party. The Zealot Party, you know what they were against? Taxes. <laughs> they wanted to stop collecting taxes and kick the Roman army out of Israel. So one is collecting taxes. One is trying to form a rebellion against taxes. And Jesus picks two people completely different and puts them together in a group and says, I want you to create a unity. I know you're different. I'm not asking you to have uniformity. I'm okay with your diversity, your different gifts, your different interests, but we have to come together and be united because that's the only way we can build up the body of Jesus, my body in this world. And so that's our theme for this year, unity, in the body of Christ. And you're, you have a very important part to play in unity this year, very important part. Because as I mentioned to a few of you in class or on tape, you're gonna be with your, what we're calling static group or your homeroom group practically all the time. I mean, this is one of the rare opportunities that you're together with other classes. And the only way, reason we're doing this is because you're so spread out. This is unlike our normal masses. But normally you're gonna be with your group. You're gonna study together. You're gonna eat together. You're gonna go to recess together. You're gonna do all activities together. So you gotta get along. There has to be unity. You can be different from one another, but we need to have unity in our school and unity in the body of Christ. So this is how we can go about bringing unity and fulfilling the prayer of Jesus because he was praying for us that night at the Last Supper, praying that we would be united. So that's what we pray for today. We ask God to give us a spirit of unity, a spirit of cooperation, a spirit of flexibility as this year, unlike other years, unfolds. We ask God to bless us and protect us, but most of all, to keep us united in the body of Christ. Can I hear a big amen? amen. A bigger amen than that? Amen. All right, that's, that's it. We're all on board for unity. God bless you. At the end of our prayers of the faithful, we're gonna have a special blessing to ask God to bless this school year. So we now bring our prayers and needs to our heavenly Father. Please stand. For all 
members of our Holy Church, may God look graciously upon our efforts and needs in serving his kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, may the Holy Spirit lead them in the ways of charity and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our prayer. For our students and teachers, may God's grace give them strength in their work. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the, this faith community, as we celebrate this feast of St. Maximilian Colby, may God imbue in us a sacrificial love for one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. For those who have died, may they find eternal joy and comfort in the presence of God our Father. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us also pray that our faith in Jesus Christ and in the sacrifice of the Mass, where Jesus prays to God the Father for us, that the Word of God, the, the Sacrament of God, the Holy Eucharist, may bring us together in the unity of the body of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Now, in your sheet, in your pews, you're going to find these yellow pages, and we have been praying these two prayers at every Mass. So I ask you please to pick up the sheets if you don't have them. Take a moment and look in the pew behind you and see if there are any there. And I want everybody please to read these together. If you need to move around just a little bit to get the sheets, please do that. So we're going to pray and uh, God, ask God to protect us and heal us from the virus. And we're going to pray our family prayer to end violence, murder, and racism in our world. And we'll begin doing that now at all of our school classes, okay? All right, please join me in praying together. Lord Jesus, you travel through towns and villages, curing every disease and illness. Come to our aid in the midst of the coronavirus that we may experience your healing love. Heal those who are sick with the virus. May they regain their strength and health. Bring those who have died from the virus to eternal peace. Protect doctors, nurses, and healthcare professionals as they help the sick. Guide researchers to develop a vaccine. Be with leaders of nations. Give them wisdom to act with true concern for their people. Stay by our side in this time of uncertainty, anxiety, and sorrow. Grant us your peace. We pray this in your most holy name, Jesus, for you are our loving and healing Lord, Our Lady of Prom Succor, St. Joseph, St. Francis Xavier, St. Rock, and St. Rosalie, pray for us, amen. Loving and faithful God, through the years the people of our Archdiocese have appreciated the prayers and love of Our Lady of Prom Succor in times of war, disaster, epidemic, and illness. We come to you, Father, with Mary, our mother, and ask you to help us in the battle of today against violence, murder, and racism. We implore you to give us your wisdom that we may build a community founded on the values of Jesus, which gives respect to the life and dignity of all people. Bless parents that they may form their children in faith. Bless and protect our youth that they may be peacemakers of our time. Give consolation to those who have lost loved ones through violence. Hear our prayer and give us the perseverance to be a voice for life and human dignity in our community. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Our Lady of Prom Succor, hasten to help us. Mother Henriette de Leo, Pray for us that we may be a holy family. Amen. And now I'm going to give a blessing for the start of the school year. Please bow your heads to receive this blessing. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of body and mind and heart. You have sent the Holy Spirit of wisdom and knowledge to guide your people in all their ways. At the beginning of this new school year, we implore your protection and your mercy. Bless our students and their families, our teachers, our staff, and their administrators of this and of all schools, that together we may grow in faith, hope, and love as we learn from you and from each other.
how to follow Jesus. Expand our, the horizons of our minds that we may grow in wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Deepen our commitment to seek the truth of your ways. Enliven our faith to reach out to those in need. And please bring us all together, closer together, in unity, in the body of Christ. And we pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and ask your blessing in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Okay, please stand now and let's pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, Bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through Christ you brought us to the knowledge of truth, so that by the bond of one faith and one baptism we might become his body. Through him you poured out your Holy Spirit among all peoples, so that in a wondrous manner he might bring unity in the diversity of your gifts, dwelling within your adopted children and filling and ruling the whole church. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. I invite you now to please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. 
We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Gregory, our Bishop, his fellow bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, <clears throat> that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, St. Francis Xavier, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. And together let us pray the prayer which Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us turn and offer each other a nod or a wave of peace. So let me explain now, you'll see in church that we have these uh, black dispensers. Do we have one on that side? Yes. Do we have one on this side? Yes or no? I can't see. Yes, okay, great. So uh, when you come to communion, for those of you who will be receiving communion, uh, before you come up, use a dispenser and put the sanitizer on your hands, okay? And then have the hand you're going to receive like this so that the minister can kind of drop the host in your hand. We, the ministers, will sanitize our hands and wear masks as well. So I invite you, just before you uh, to receive, receive communion, and then as you step away, then pull down your mask or remove your mask and then receive communion at that time. Okay, and then you can go back to your seat. Thank you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. And by the way, for those not receiving communion because you're not Catholic, uh, I invite you, instead of staying in your place, I invite you to come forward and to receive a blessing. Please see. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. 
but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Please stand. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those who believe in you one in mind and heart by the power of this sacrifice. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I just want to say you did great today. Really great. Thank you. I know it's not comfortable to wear those masks. It's not comfortable for me. I know it's not comfortable for you, but thank you for tolerating that yeah, so that we can be together to celebrate this Eucharist together. Just to check, are there any announcements while we got everybody together? We're good? Okay. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Have a great day of school and a wonderful weekend. God bless you.